Hi guys, Jordan from Infinity Campers. Just gonna do your handover video on your Swiss Contiki. Um, it's better late than never. Um, so we're starting on the bonnet. You've got your um, washer fluid reservoir on the left hand side just here. Your power steering fluid sits in this one just to the right of that. Engine coolant sits in the next one just there. With the orange looking, orangey sort of pink looking fluid inside there. Brake fluid attached to the servo down the back. It's this yellow topped one just here. Engine oil gets topped up through this cap just here at the top of the engine. And your engine oil uh, dipstick is that one with the red top just down there. To get to these bits and pieces just in here a bit easier, you've got these little tiny twist caps. Just take them off and then this whole thing just comes out so you can get to there nice and easily. Not that you should really need to. Um, your engine battery in these um cabs all of these cabs are exactly the same the engine battery sits just in front of the driver's seat uh, passenger seat sorry in the cab um so if you want to jump start the van you've got the positive terminal which sits just underneath this little cap down here so you just need to pull this open and then look inside there and then you've got your negative prong which is this one just up here so it says there only for jump start so yeah so that's basically how you jump start the van if you ever needed to um sorry about all the noise just by the road, so that's why. Um, right, so we've got your diesel filling cap just inside here, so you need your ignition key to get into that. Um, there's no add blue or anything fancy like that to worry about, it's just diesel. Uh, the bonnet release on these cabs is this one just inside here, so that's nice and easy to get to. But it also means that you can't get into it unless the cab's open. So there's no way of anyone getting inside um, without you wanting them to. Fresh water inlet is this cap just in here. Um, you can lock that up if you want to, but to be honest, it's you know it's, it's up to you. Open that up and then just push in and round to the left on this to get that to come out. And in the same way, the other way to lock it up, close it over. If you had a way of um, filling up the water without using like a hose fitting or something like that, some sort of direct water. And you can also use this, a bit awkward to get off with one hand, but basically there's just a little two prong 12 volt power just there. And if you had like a submersible pump that you wanted to drop into an external water uh, sort of bucket or anything like that, then you can do so by using that power just there. You've also got um, external gas point. So that's that one just here. Um, so it says in there, connect first and then open. So basically you just need to turn this 90 degrees and then that'll let the gas come out. Fridge vents are these ones just here. So if you wanted to double check that your gas was definitely lit, you can either have a little listen through here or if you can reach, you might be able to feel a little bit of warm air coming through out of the top one. Um, but you know, you might not be able to, you should be able to hear it, but I'll show you how to use it on the inside anyway before we, uh, before we finish. Um, behind this cover, you have got access to your Aldi heating system, um, which also is your waste drain, which is this one just here. So if you want to drain out your wastewater, that's the one just there. And if you wanted to drain out the boiler system, it's that one just there. So you just need to lift that up so that it's horizontal rather than uh, vertical, sorry, rather than horizontal. Um, so that's how you drain your water out. The reason you would drain the um, water out from the boiler, just you know, just in case you didn't know, is if it gets to sort of like a minus temperature, or you know, it gets really, really cold, and you're not going to be using the van, you need to drain the boiler out before that happens. Basically, um, it just saves any pipes from splitting or bursting because the uh, water might freeze inside, um, and you know, if that happens, then you sort of in a bit of trouble. So just make sure that you drain it out if you're not going to be using it, and you know it's going to be really, really cold. Um, your awning winder, unfortunately I can't really show you the awning coming out because I've only got one hand to do it with, but awning winder is just inside here. I have had it out as part of the hab check and I have lubricated all of the little moving parts. So that should work exactly how it should. Um, well, I know that it does because I did it on the hab check. Um, bike rack is all there. Obviously we've had to, or somebody has had to move this across a little bit to give you space to, have, to, to use the ladder. Um, but that's all there, all fitted. Inside this right hand rear door, you get a bit of better access to your spare wheel, which is just up here. 
And you've also got this big cover here, which has battery on the top. So there's two leisure batteries in there and I actually had to replace them from new. Uh, well, not, not from new, sorry. When I was doing the habitation check, the uh, both of the batteries in there were knackered. So you've got two brand new leisure batteries um, in there that I've fitted. So you should be good to go for that. Obviously, it doesn't matter new battery or not, they will drain out if you use it for too long without charging. So if you have access to a hookup cable, it is really, really good practice. Um, I know you've got a van already, but it's really, really handy to keep it hooked up every now and again, just to keep, keep the batteries charged up. Like I said, it doesn't matter, new or old battery, um, they can still run out of power pretty quickly if you don't charge them up every now and again. So if you've got access to a hookup cable, that'd be ideal. If you can just plug it in every now and again, or just take the van out for a nice long drive every once in a while, just to keep those batteries topped up. It's always good to practice. So I'll just wipe the camera a little bit. There you go. Right, so in here, you've got um, two refillable gas bottles. So, let me have a look here. So, your inlet pipe is this one just here, which comes through from your inlet at the front. Um, that obviously, you you sort of fill these up. If you go to a petrol station, it'll have LPG written on it. Um, if they do sell the gas, that you can fill up with. So you do literally just take this little cap off and then fill up from there. And it's pretty easy. When you get to the, the petrol station, it, you, you'll see how you do it. Um, the bottles up here, the only thing that you really need to sort of keep your eye on um, is when you turn them on, so it's anti-clockwise to go on like that. You can do both at the same time. And the only thing to sort of point out is if you go into the van now and realize there's still no gas coming through, it could mean two things. Obviously, one could be that your gas bottles are empty. They're not at the moment, but it could mean that. The other thing is you could have to push these little green buttons in so for a couple of seconds and then same for a couple of seconds. And also, again, if you don't get any gas through even then, push this little green button here on the actual regulator itself for a couple of seconds. And then that's all of the purging done. So they're all basically safety mechanisms. So, you know, the newer style vans have got um, so if you had a crash, it would sort of stop the gas coming through and stuff like that. So just make sure that you purge them through like that if, you, you know, if you're going to use the gas inside the van. But other than that, that is it. That's all you need to do. I'll leave them on for a minute, but obviously you need to make sure that you switch them off before you start driving. You've got an external water point here. So if you had the, uh, the right hose point, you basically just plug it in there. You know, you can wash your boots off, wash your dog off, whatever. Um, and so that's quite handy if you've got that. Um, your toilet cassette locker. So you've got the new style Thetford toilet cassette. The only thing I need to point out to you with this one really um, is you've got a fresh water flush, which is this pipe on the right hand side. So there's no pink fluid to fill up above it or anything like that. Um, draining it out, obviously, I know that you already know this, um, but you just drain it out through this front cap just here and when you do drain it out you need to hold down the little orange button at the back um, which is like an air pressure release so make sure that you're holding that down when you're emptying and then you'll be good to go on that and then finally on the outside you've got your hookup cable inlet which is just here so if you're at your campsite or at home then that's where you use your hookup um, so that'll automatically as soon as you plug that in that'll automatically start charging up your leisure batteries in the back um, and also give you power to all of your three-point sockets inside the van. Right, so just jump in and show you a few bits around the cab. Um, obviously, it's pretty much the highest spec cab you can get, I think. Um, it's not far off it whatsoever. Um, so you've obviously got the original sort of doubled-in-sized um, Fiat stereo system. So that's all there, all standard. Air conditioning switch is this one just here and obviously that won't come on or, or work uh, until your number is on one or above um, because the fan needs to be running for the aircon to work overall temperature is this outside dial on the left and then the fan speed setting is this one here in the middle so if you want to draw the air in from outside or recirculate that's this one in the middle on the right hand side and you've also got your fan setting so where this where the actual fan blows the air to um, is there so windscreens on the right if you wanted that 
you can adjust the volume of the stereo on the actual steering wheel and also if you hook up your phone to, well i'm assuming you can hook up your phone uh, to the stereo system judging by these buttons you look looks like you can sort of answer and decline calls from there as well you've got cruise control from this bottom left hand stalk just here so have a little go with that if you want to um so it's all factory fitted stuff it's not aftermarket lights are on this left hand stalk here by the looks of it you can leave the switch on when you get out because it'll turn them off anyway but obviously always good practice to switch them off just in case indicators on the left washers and wipers on the right electric adjusting mirrors so you use this little dial here to choose which mirror you want to move and then basically just use it as a joystick um, to move it as you know as and where you want to you can lock and unlock the cab from inside using this button just here or using this button just here electric uh, windows and the last thing really you've got a six speed manual gearbox which the actual gear ratios in these are really really nice so when you'll find when you get into sixth gear on the motorway it's you know not noisy not anything it's a lovely sort of low rpm to sit at um and this would be the three liter engine in here so really really nice and powerful um doesn't feel underpowered even though it's a nice big heavy van um so yeah i think you'd be well pleased with this reverse is probably the same as your van was um but lift up on the bottom up and over to the top left and obviously first to sixth is in the same standard way uh right so if i just hop out try not to step on your stuff um okay so if we start up here just by the control panel um i'll run you through the basics of it because you know i don't have to show you absolutely everything i know you've got a van already but so to actually turn the control panel on at the moment it is on and on this main screen it's telling you a couple of things it's telling you the voltage in the battery 12 and a half so that's absolutely brilliant for a resting battery rate it's telling you that everything's working via the leisure battery the l and the time which is just slightly off if i press this button just here power goes off and it just come up with that little screen there i think after a little while it will turn itself completely off so that you don't waste any battery um although i don't think it would waste very much if it was like that anyway um right so we switch it on power comes on if we scroll through going up it tells us a few different things internal temperature don't have to worry about that tank heaters off so you could turn the tank heaters on if you wanted to select battery so if you wanted to change from leisure to vehicle which you should never do then you can do so there um but like i say you don't want to do that telling you that the power going into the leisure battery from the solar so that's working vehicle battery level leisure battery level and that's it through and go back to the beginning okay so that's that um you have also got their dimmer level so you can change that so basically that's your lights around the van they're, they're all like a dimmer switch so you can bring them up and down um if you want to you can do that from there um <clears throat> other than that you've got your awning light switch which is this one just on the top left hand side um so you can turn that on and off you see the little light goes on and off in there um lights so that's your dimmer level so that's that one there you switch that on and off and then use your switches on the right hand side to adjust the dimmer if you want to if not you can just leave it at 100 percent um which i think a lot of people do another li little light switch just underneath that which is this one so that powers up your little individual lights around the van and obviously they've all got their own um switches on them to actually make them work um okay so that's about it really on the control panel um so the first thing you want to do when you come into the van, if you want to use the boiler and things like that, heat your water up, all that sort of business, um, you want to use your pump switch, which is this one just down here. So when you switch that off, there you go. So there's a good example. All right. So when I turn that on just then, because we drain the water out after the hab checks to stop anything from, you know, from leaking or, or bursting, anything like that. Um, what has happened there is it's telling you that your water level is too low to run the pump. And the reason it, it says that and the reason it beeps at you like that, I think you can turn that beep off if you want to in the settings, but it is actually handy to use that because if you turned your pump switch on and didn't realise that the pump was running because it, unless it gets to pressure, which it needs obviously water for, um, it won't switch itself off. And then after a little while, 
the pump will burn itself out and then you'll be looking at getting a new pump. Um, so really, really handy to have that. So where I turn it on just there, it came up saying water level too low. And so the pump won't get to any pressure at all. So to use the, the water in this van, you do need to have a little bit of water in the tank at the very, very least. Um, so when you first go to use it, make sure that you do that. But anyway, once you've got water in a tank, you just switch your pump switch on and then just come over to your, your sort of sink over here and just pull the water through on the hot side and wait for the water to come through nice and clearly without any sort of coughing or spluttering. And when it does that, when the hot side's coming through nice and easily, that means that your boiler is full of water. Um, until it does that, your boiler is not full and you can't use it. Um, you can use it for heating, but you can't use it for hot water. So obviously I'll run you through that in a minute. And that's the Aldi system just here for that. But that's so important. What I'm, what I'm saying there, the first thing you want to do, like I said, pump on and pull your hot water through to, to ensure that your, your boiler is full of water. So important because if you don't do that and the boiler is empty like it is at the moment, and then you try and light the boiler up and heat the water up and there's nothing in it, then essentially you get into problems like burning things out. If you tried to boil an empty kettle, you get the same problems. So make sure that you do that first. Um, you know, like I say, otherwise it will start to, yeah, go wrong. Um, but I'm not trying to scare you with that. I'm just trying to say that that's, you know, if you, if you look after the boiler, then uh, it'll be good as gold. Um, if your gas is on, you better use all of these up here. And you've got a little hot plate on this top left-hand side. That will only work when you hook up cables plugged in and you've got this number either through, you know, one to six. You've got a light for inside the oven and ignition is this one just here. I don't need to show you how to use any of these because it's, you know, your van will have the same and it's just like any household cooker, to be honest. It, you've got a little diagram telling you exactly which one does which. So that's bottom left, bottom right. Grill is this one just here and your oven is this one on the right so you know like i said you, you don't need to i don't need to run you through that because it is all simple stuff um you've got a thermocouple on each of these in fact every single gas appliance in this entire van has got a thermocouple um and what that little prong of metal there does it essentially senses burning gas and if you light the one of these up so if i just light one up gas might take a minute to come through or it might be empty. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it's just, so, just struggling to come through a little bit because it's not been on for a little while. Okay, there you go. Coming through normal now. So that, you know, another good example, that is something that might happen if you don't use the van for a little while. I mean, we've not been in there and lit, lit anything up for about, well, I don't know, th nearly three months now, I think. So. You know, that will happen when you first light things up. So basically, I've got it lit up at the moment. So you see there, it's lit up. It's not turning itself off. So that means it's all working as it should. But when I switch this off, or in fact, I'll tell you what, if I blew it out with my mouth, you know, or the wind blew the, blew the flame out, then what happens is that little prong of metal just there senses that there's no more burning gas coming through. And then it will realise that there's actually gas still pumping out, but it's not burning, if that makes sense. So the thermocouple stops that gas coming through. So basically, like I said, if, if that gets blown out and this stays like this, the gas will still be pumping through, but after about 10, 15 seconds or so, the thermocouple will stop that happening. So switch it off like that. And then after about 20 seconds or so, you should hear a little click as well, um, which is that thermocouple working its magic. Um, one thing to point out as well with these cookers, same as all the cookers on the vans with the glass lids, don't put the lid down straight away after using, even though, you know, obviously don't, don't put it down when it's actually lit, but even after, like just now, just that, I wouldn't put this lid down now for a little while. Um, because, you know, like I said, any sort of heat that comes up into that cold glass, you know what happens with glass, you know, it, it could crack. Um, so it's always handy to leave these open a little, a little while after using um, the cooker. You've got a microwave up here, which obviously, like I said, I have, I would have checked as part of the habitation check. Um, this will obviously only work when you hook up cables plugged in, um, but it does work. And I've written down how many how many amps it pulls, or at least I should have, unless I've done something wrong. 
Um, the fridge is nice and simple. You've got an AES fridge, so it's an auto automatic energy selecting fridge if you want it to be. Um, so if I just show you now, turn it on. 